Malibu Lagoon right now is choking to death and it's hard to see from a human perspective. The problem is the way it's functioning in the water. First, there's too many nutrients. Second, that leads to low dissolved oxygen. And third, there's too much sedimentation. What happens is the tide waters come in, they carry sediment, the sediment drops out, and there isn't enough draw on the way back to bring any of that sediment there. So it's rapidly filling. The oxygen levels go below five milligrams per liter on a regular basis, and that's really a threshold when aquatic life begins to experience stress. The ecology of the lagoon is severely impaired, and the end result is both the state water board, the EPA, the regional water board, they've all made it clear that this lagoon is so polluted that it needs to be cleaned up by law. This really has been a project that has received a lot of public notice, public meetings that occurred over many, many years, and it has a great deal of support. The Malibu Lagoon Restoration Project was developed through a series of public meetings that began really back in 1991 with the Malibu Creek Watershed Advisory Council. The Lagoon Restoration effort has been a very public process. Not only were there numerous hearings where the public was involved, talking about various different alternatives for lagoon restoration, um, but there was also the environmental review process with the environmental impact report for the restoration. And then on top of that, there were public hearings on permit approvals. Bulldozers are not an evil thing in and of themselves. They're near, merely a tool, just like a shovel or a hose. In the 1930s, this entire area, this coastal wetland, was filled largely with debris from the cutting of P Pacific Coast Highway. Volunteers with shovels in 10 years would not be able to re-contour the lagoons. The way that funding works, I'm going to take this question seriously, you know, there's a temptation to laugh as a resource conservation professional. I work part-time. I actually have to teach and do pri private practice work as an architect in order to afford to be a conservationist. The scientists that have been advising us uh, were all volunteers. They didn't get paid anything. Um, the scientists who gave us our permits get paid by their agencies. They get no extra money. That would be um, illegal. The bond money that was approved for this, those monies, it turns out, we've heard from some experts in bond um, finance at the state, if those are not used, they will be put back into the general fund. That means more education, more health care, the kinds of things that this city needs funding for. If it doesn't go to this sick lagoon that everyone in Malibu loves, it will go somewhere else and it'll fix someone else's most loved space. That's the thing is that people, they've known this place for a long time, they love it, they're very fiercely protective of it, and I understand that, but that's why we're trying to let people know that this is, this is the doctor, this thing has appendicitis, it's got toxic things flowing through it, it needs to be restructured so that it can be healthy and can have a long, long life. This has been a very open and above board process that's taken place over 10 years. There may be some people that just came to Malibu within the last year or two, or they're, perhaps they're very, very young in their 20s, that don't recall that we went through this uh, exhaustive process. At some point when you're planning a project and you have all of the input from the stakeholders, you have to move on and get the project planned. We cannot go back and reopen things after everyone has agreed unanimously that this is what we need to do. We have the funds in place, we have the political will, and we have the scientific backing to do true ecological restoration at Malibu Lagoon, and we should all be very proud of it.